Welcome to today's edition of Coffee with Coach Caffey. We're going to be talking about the McCamey Badgers. Uh, we had an outstanding team down there in uh, 1996. And, uh, you know, when they hired me down there at McCamey, uh, 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 oh, uh, Joe Neal gave me a call after I'd been down there to interview. And he said, Coach, we decided uh, who we're going to hire for this job. And the way he said it, I thought, well, it's not me. And he said, and it's you. <laughs> he was always kind of a jokester. But Joe's one of my favorite people that I ever worked with. He was a very positive guy. He was, uh, he was motivational. He was supportive. Uh, you know, very honest. And, uh, you know, he'd been at McCamey for 25 years, I think, when I got there. And, uh, you know, of course, he was a superintendent. And then the other uh, administrator there that I worked closely with was Jerry Stetson. And both of these men were very loyal and good men and good Christian men. And so that was a real plus for me when I went down. Uh, McCamey had not been uh, very successful. They had a numbers problem when I got there. They had uh, six returning starters on varsity, and they had only 11 kids on the JV the year before. So they had 17 kids coming back that had even played high school football the year before. And so after we struggled uh, around through off season, we beat the halls and got all the guys out that should have been playing. We started football season my first year with 54 guys out for football, which was a huge, you know, uh, number compared to what they had. And anyway, the first year we, you know, we we played pretty good football, but our best football was uh, played the second year. And so uh, the second year we were seven and three, and uh, we lost to a very good Crane team that was couple of divisions higher than us and uh, and you know they were very successful. We lost to our Ann who won the state championship uh, the next year and then we lost to uh, to, to uh, Stanton who also won the state championship the year after our Ann did. So uh, we were probably the best and back in those days they only took two teams to, to the playoffs and we're the probably the best team in the whole state that did not get to go to the playoffs that year. And uh, that team really deserved to go to the playoffs because they, they played great. Uh, some of the guys that played well on that team were uh, Isaiah Navarrete was the quarterback. And the thing I remember about Isaiah is he was such a competitor. And uh, we, you know, of course, did that dummy jump test that many of you are familiar with. It's, very, it's exhausting. Uh, Isaiah, he wanted to win, win that so bad that, you know, he sold out so hard that after he finished, he just laid down on the, the, the mat because he had the blind staggers. And he was, a, he was an example of a great competitor. And uh, the d first day we decided to wrestle because, you know, that's something we'd always done. Well, he, Isaiah, uh, we'd let them kind of pick who they wanted to wrestle. Isaiah got out and slapped that mat and said, Bustos! He wanted the toughest guy out there. No, Bustos was tough. And so he and Bustos went after it, and it was a pretty good fight. Isaiah wasn't scared of anyone. Uh, but he was great. He was all Permian Basin quarterback, and I was very proud of him. Went on to play college football at McMurray and started for the McMurray Indians back in those days. Uh, then Gomez was our fullback. He was a bruiser. He had a big old, big old head on him, and he'd run in there, and he'd just like a sledgehammer hitting people. And uh, Joe Angel De Leon, he was about 205 pound tailback, and uh, and uh, old Joe Angel, he was hard to stop. Kelsey Folger's a guy that we got out of the halls uh, to play tight end, and he was a good athlete, good basketball player, and he. He really helped us at tight end. Chris McMahon, he was uh, he was a great route runner and had great hands. So he was one of our key receivers. And Bernie Carrasco, well, we ran a lot of wishbone and 
three back offense there and Bernie was more he was kind of the power back and uh, it was a great one of the most outstanding blockers we ever had and then uh, we had uh, Nick Zahaski small left tackle our line that second year was not very big our center was uh, George Paul Strigler and uh, our right guard was Martin Bustos and left guard was Marcus Granado and our right tackle was Jeremy Beckwith he's very uh, first-class young man that uh, again came out after our first year there we tried to, as much as we could have one-way starters and so defensively we had uh, two guys play defensive tackles for us that were just super quick maybe the smallest defensive tackles we played with but we played a 4-3 defense and uh, Vicente Frosto and Jose Diaz were the two defensive tackles and man I tell you what they could give guards miseries if they because of their quickness Nathan Vaughn was our strong side defensive end and uh, Andrew Dillon was our other defensive end and John David was our Willie linebacker and so John David and Andrew kind of traveled together they were really good friends and uh, they, 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 they had flip-flop uh, strong and weak with, with Nathan Vaughn and I can't really remember who the Sam linebacker was I think it was uh, Joe Angel Adrian Navarrete was uh, was uh, was one of our defensive backs that played one way. So anyway, uh, you know, uh, some some things that we went through there that first year. Uh, Isaiah got hurt, and uh, Bernie Carrasco was our backup quarterback, and he got hurt too. Both of them at at four sand, and so we went in to the next week. Uh, we were going to play Fort Davis. And we had to pull uh, John David up off of the the JV, and uh, and uh, we called him in and said, John David, you're you're going to be the starting quarterback this week. And he said, you know what? <laughs> so, but he did a he did a great job. And uh, that first year we had Nick Granado and Tim McNerlin, Octavio Rodriguez. Well, John David, he could barely see over those those huge linemen we had the first year. And so, but we went on and beat. The Fort Davis Indians uh, pretty handily and then we went to Van Horn and did the same thing and so the next week we had to play the state champion IRM Braves and so uh, uh, you know and it wouldn't have mattered I don't think who played quarterback that night we had had a hard time beating those guys but but uh, John David he was two and one as a quarterback and that first year the following year, uh, you know, uh, we we uh, we lost to Iran again, and uh, they had you know just they were just loaded with talent, but it uh, it was our you know it was probably one of the most uh, memorable games that we had because we fought so hard. Uh, we had about 400 yards of offense that night. We were up and down the field, but. You know, they just we couldn't really stop them, and so uh, I was I was so proud. And I told the team, I said, if if y'all beat Iran, I'll shave my head. Well, uh, you know, they played so well that uh, my wife burned all my hair off, and uh, and uh, in honor of that effort. And so we were extremely proud of those kids. They were a very intelligent group. Uh, high academic class they were they were good in everything that they tried to do and uh, uh, so that was quite an experience uh, coaching those guys the other game we lost that, that put us out of the playoffs we lost at Stanton and uh, you know they had the, they had an outstanding quarterback that ended up playing for Rice and uh, and he was he was something special and that of course they had a couple other really good good athletes and some you know I really had two good coaches that really uh, influenced me there Robert Sexton and Roy Gish uh, Robert Sexton was we hired him out of Midland High and he he's a college uh, teammate of mine and Robert he really 
uh, taught us a lot about defense. You know, he especially was 4-3, cover 2 read is what we call it. And so, uh, you know, we still use that at, at Brentwood Christian last year. And uh, Roy Gesh was, was a, a big offensive line coach. I also played at Sol Ross. And uh, so, uh, and... Uh, he, Roy went on to be superintendent in Navasota, yeah, but he, he also was a head football coach, and Robert coached all over West Texas and well-respected. Um, then I had Johnny Valdez. Uh, I used to call Johnny Valdez the Pied Piper. Uh, he, he, could, he, he could round up those, those uh, kids like a like the Pied Piper, and they'd, they'd follow Johnny anywhere. You'd go out there at lunchtime, and they'd all be gathered around Coach Valdez talking to him. And uh, so he was, he was quite a man. We took him to, with us to Anson also. Uh, but it was a great experience for us. Uh, we, had, uh, we had, you know, good linemen. We had a, a team that had great quickness. They worked hard in the off season. Uh, you know, we had... Uh, I still remember Coach Cherry wanted to come over and watch our off season. Coach Cherry from Crane, he came over and watched our off season just to see what we were doing over there because we got better so quickly. And uh, so, uh, great experience. Joe Neal was a friend for life until he passed a few years back, and uh, and uh, we always stayed in contact. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a second today about. Uh, you know, uh, oftentimes we as people, we, 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 we get to thinking that, uh, that the troubles and problems we have are, are unique to us. And, um, you know, we think, well, Lord, why am I, why am I being, uh, why, am I, why, do I, why do I have to go through these things? You know, and, and uh, you know, the Bible speaks about trials and temptations, but... I just wanted to talk to you a moment about uh, Jesus' last week on this earth and what he, what he went through in that last week. Well, you know, I, I've often said you don't need to get too high or too low uh, uh, because of, uh, you know, you just need to stay humble when, you, when things are going good and you need to not get too down when things are not. <clears throat> so Jesus, on, on Sunday of his last week on earth, uh, or last week uh, uh, before he was uh, crucified, he uh, he enters Jerusalem with a, you know, a triumphal triumphal entry, and uh, he, you know, it's like a they have a big parade for him, and he's celebrated as he comes into town, and then uh, that Sunday and then Monday Jesus curses the fig tree then uh, also on Monday Jesus clears the temple he goes in there and he takes care of some business and then Tuesday uh, you know just a couple of days later after they had a parade for him the uh, they're questioning Jesus authority and uh, so Jesus later on that day went ahead and taught in the temple after they questioned his authority then Jesus is anointed uh, after that on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they plot to kill him. Uh, on Thursday, he has the Last Supper with his disciples, and he predicts that one of his disciples will betray him. And, uh, of course, that's Judas, and he does. And... Uh, uh, but Jesus, you know, even though he knows that he's fixing to be betray betrayed, he comforts his disciples because he knows things are going to get tough for them. And he predicts that they're all going to scatter, which they do. You know, when Jesus goes through the crucifixion, uh, he doesn't have, have that big crowd around, you know, of support. Uh, <coughs> he goes to Gethsemane and it's a time of mourning. Because Jesus knows what's about to happen, and I, you know, and then he's arrested Thursday night, and then Friday they have a trial, 
on that same day they hang him on the cross and crucify him to death and then later on that night or late evening that they bury Jesus and then so after the bury after burial on Friday then uh, by Sunday the tomb is empty and uh, you know uh, it's his, his disciples are, you know, gathered together. They're worried about what's going to happen. And then Jesus comes back to life. Well, you know, uh, I, <clears throat> when you think about the betrayal, uh, I think all of us go through that and uh, at, at times, especially as in coaching and athletics. You know, people that you think are, are your strong supporters may end up not being that. And so it's, it's, you know, it's very painful. But Jesus went through that himself. You know, Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. And the other, the other guys, they, they disappeared on him. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't that easy. But Jesus was an example of strength and courage, the way that he, the way that he handled all that. You know, uh, and I think... If you look back on those times and see how he handled it, it can be an encouragement to you when you're going through those difficult times of your life. Uh, my email address is stcaffey at hotmail.com. And, uh, you know, uh, like always, uh, I'm getting to be an old dude, and sometimes I forget somebody I should have mentioned. And I apologize for that. But... Uh, these these uh, McCamey badges were dear to me, and I, I pray that everything has gone well for them. I know some some of them have really done uh, uh, done well in their careers. You know, gone on. I know that uh, Kelsey Folger and maybe Bernie are engineers now. I think uh, today's coffee cup is. Uh, uh, from Super Bowl, I can't even read how many that 38. is. 38. It was Super Bowl 38, and it was held in Houston. That's the closest I ever came to actually going to Super Bowl. I got to go to the to all the pregame hoopla, but uh, at uh, the convention center. But uh, it was a lot of fun, and that was a memorable time. And you know, one one more coffee cup that I got uh, over the years that. Uh, of great experiences we've had, and I cherish those. And so, God bless you, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks.